All right, we're going to get started. Do you have that recording back there? Okay, there's some that can't be here tonight, so we're recording for that reason, but then for another reason I'll explain to you in just a moment. But uh, good to have you here tonight. Again, we're missing some. I know there's some at camp, I hear, and some for a funeral that are not here tonight. And, but we're still going to have fun, right? Right, Colin? we got something special for you tonight, okay, something different. So um, I think we'll just, rather than sing a song, just go ahead and get started, and if we have time at the end, we can do something else. But um, Rachel, as you know, is, is teaching for Lakeland Child Evangelism again this summer, and they are putting their summer clubs online on their website. And so they need to record these lessons and things. And uh, so we were just going to do it sometime during the week or whatever, but it would be kind of hard without live people there. We had to do that for a couple of weeks, didn't we, <laughs> or George? Uh, hard to preach to empty pews, but anyway, so I thought, we'll just, Wednesday night, well, at least for the first one, we'll have her come and do, and it can be a live session, and, and maybe do another one Sunday night, maybe, something like that, and get these uh, taken care of for her five-day lessons that she's been doing, all right? Does that sound okay? So, she's got a Bible story, missionary story, uh, and whatever else, a couple other things that she normally does, so, and then I thought what we would do, uh, this suggestion came hinted to me, but I think we'll do it Sunday night is uh, afterwards, I think we'll have her do another one Sunday night, uh, and then afterwards we'll have some watermelon and uh, some cookies and some things like that, okay? Uh, since it's 4th of July weekend, it's going to be hot all weekend, and you're going to want something refreshing, okay? Uh, so I was going to do it tonight, but I thought, well, Sunday night there'll probably be more people, so we'll, uh, we'll do it then. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right, so, Rachel, are you ready? Oh, let's have all the young people, children, if you can, if you want to come sit right in the middle so you can see up close the stories and things, okay? <laughs> Just right in here is fine, okay? All right, come on, come on, come on. All right. Four more. Oh, well, that's actually kind of big. All right. Are you ready? Go ahead. Is that good? All right. So you guys have all heard about Satan, right? Yeah. You guys all know who Satan is. Well, I'm sure most of you guys know this too. But did you guys know that Satan was always Satan? He used to be an angel. And Johnny, did you know that? <laughs> His to be Lucifer. That was his name. We don't call him Lucifer anymore. Because now we call him Satan. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lucifer. So he was the chosen angel of God. Okay, let me get my picture. I forgot. And he had been created by God long before he ever lived upon the earth. And Lucifer, he was more beautiful than anything we could imagine. 
His clothing was trimmed with precious stones like diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and many others, and they were all set in fine gold. Um, and the Bible says that he was perfect in beauty and full of wisdom. And Lucifer, he lived in the presence of God. And there he did what God told him to do. And like I said, he was the chosen angel of God. And he was to rule in a very high place above other angels. And the word of God, the Bible says, he thought no wrong, he did no wrong, and he worshipped God. Well, one day, Lucifer, for the very first time, had a bad thought. And he started to become selfish, and he started to think of himself. And he thought, I want to be like God. I want to be the highest over everything, the highest of all. I want to have his majesty. I want to have his power. And so he wanted to be God, basically. And God, who is holy, he cannot allow any sin into heaven. You guys all know what sin is? Give me an example of, of a sin. Punching Zach in the face. Um, <laughs> what's another sin? Not cleaning your room when your mom tells you to. Yes. Lying. lying? Yep, lying is a sin. Um, what if I got up? I went to Stephen and I did in the face. Is that a, is that a sin? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. or makes God cheating on your own um, not doing it for parents. Um, yeah, those are all bad things. God to banish and Lucifer from heaven. And so his name, he was no longer to be obey or go to all of the plans. So he made it his mission to try by them. And uh, they actually used to be pretty. They're not anymore. And there in that garden, he tempted to on a wet <laughs> it's called that's tempting him. And so Satan, he was trying to get Eve to do something bad. And 
She listened to Satan. She disobeyed God. She ate the apple. And so ever since, and Adam sinned too, but ever since that day, everyone born into the world is born in sin. You know, we've all done something bad, right? <laughs> yeah, we've all done something bad. Um, I've done bad things. Your parents have all done bad things. My dad, who's a pastor, he's done things. Okay, we've all done bad stuff. Is it on? Oh, I, I turned it off then. <laughs> okay. So God, he created, he created a way that we could still go to heaven. Because of those bad things we've done, we cannot get into heaven. Because like I said earlier, heaven is a perfect place. And so we cannot get there on our own. No matter how many good things we've done, we cannot get to heaven. It doesn't matter if we've done like 700,567,375,672 good things and only two bad things. Those two bad things are still going to keep us out of heaven. And so God, he created a way for us to get to heaven because he loves us. And what did, what did God do? He died for our sins. He sent Jesus to earth who never did anything wrong, okay? We've all done something, something wrong, but Jesus is the only one that never sinned. He never even had a bad thought in his head. And so he was the only one that could do this for us. He willingly bled and died on that cross. He did not have to. He could have called 10,000 angels to come down, destroy the land, and set him free, if you guys know that song. Um, but he didn't. He did it for us because he loves us. But did he stay on the cross? Did he stay dead? No. Three days later, he rose again. Okay, He was alive again. And he wants us to come and live with him in heaven. And all we have to do is trust in him as our savior. So um, all we have to do, there's three steps, okay? Admit that we have sinned, that we have done wrong things. Believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross for us, that he rose again. And then confess our sins. Tell Jesus that we know we've done bad things, and we're sorry for those wrong things that we've done. So if you have never asked Jesus into your heart, if you have never asked Jesus for forgiveness, I am going to say one quick little sample prayer. Um, you guys can follow along in your head. You can say it out loud. I don't care. Um, so if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, let me figure out how to close this up. bow your heads and close your eyes okay no one looking around all right dear Jesus I know that I have done bad things and I deserve the punishment for those bad things but I believe that you died on the cross rose again to save me from my sin and I want you to come into my life right now and forgive me so I can go to heaven in Jesus name Amen. All right, you guys can open your eyes. That is how simple it is to know that you are going to heaven, to ask for forgiveness. All right, so that was my Bible story. Um, now we're going to do a Bible verse, okay? Each one of these lessons is going to have a Bible story. It's going to have a Bible verse, and then it's going to have what's called a missionary story, okay? So right now we're going to do our Bible verse. Go ahead and 
stand up for this, I guess. Okay, so our Bible verse for today is 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, um, so let's try saying it together a couple times, and then we're going to play a game with it, okay, to help you guys rem memorize the verse. Okay, so I need everyone to help me say it, okay, even the adults. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That was easy. That was an easy verse, right? Okay, so let's say it one more time and then we'll play our game, okay? 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All right, so I am going to put, first of all, can you guys get loud? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, can you guys be really quiet? I'm going to look at the parents for this one. Can they be quiet? <laughs> okay, so I am going to put my hand up, and I am going to put my hand down. The higher my hand goes, the louder I want you to be. Just please do not scream, okay? I do not need a headache. Um, and the lower my hand goes, the quieter I want you to be, okay? And we're going to say the verse while I do that, okay? Make sense? Everyone on the same page? Yeah? Okay. Let's go ahead and try it. We'll start out loud, okay? First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Easy, right? Okay, so now mm, let's do it one more time. I'll do it one more time because it's fun. I like to do this. Okay, uh, let's start out really quiet, okay? First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Good job. Okay, so I am going to need a volunteer to come up and help me. Why don't you come on up here? All right, you are going to put your hand up and put your hand down, okay? You are going to tell us whether to be loud or quiet. <laughs> okay, where do you want to start? Hi, okay. Are you guys ready? First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All right, thank you. You can go back to your seat. Can I have another volunteer to come up and help me? All right, you want to start really loud or really quiet? Quiet? Okay. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All right, good job. Does, can I have another volunteer? Come on up here, Johnny. Okay, do you want to start really loud or really quiet? Really loud? Okay, put your hand up. All right. First John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Thank you, Donnie. Anyone else want to come up and try it? Colin, come on up here. All right, you want to start really loud or really quiet? Really loud? Okay, put your hand up then. All right. First John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, anyone else? Come on up here, Stephen. All right. <laughs> I know you're taller than me. Thank you for pointing it out. Okay, loud. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All right. You should know that I had some kids before that would just go like this the entire time, thinking we could keep up with that. <sighs> All right. So now... 
we're going to do our missionary story, okay? So who can tell me what a missionary is? What's a missionary? Yes, someone that tells other people about Jesus. And I believe we have some visiting missionaries in the back to the UK. Did I hear? To the UK. But, you know, you don't always have to go to another country to be a missionary. Even just telling your neighbors about Jesus is being a missionary, okay? Or someone at the gas station, at Walmart, at Kmart that is no longer in existence, okay? <laughs> So uh, you can tell, you can be a missionary anywhere, okay? You don't always have to travel around. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about a boy named Tony. If I can find the right picture. All right. Now, Tony, he uh, was always getting into trouble, okay? Um, he was what people called him a rascal. They called him the rascal boy, okay? And you, sh you should know that this is a true story, okay? All of this that I'm going to tell you actually happened, okay? So Tony, he was always getting into mischief, and his family lived in a town in Italy, okay? They lived in Italy in a town called Messina. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Um, and they lived in some barracks with other families because their hometown had been destroyed by a tornado. And so they lived in Messina in barracks with other families, and everyone called him a rascal. And two years had passed since this tornado, and one day, Tony, he saw a horseless carriage. He called it a horseless carriage because cars were not very popular back then. Um, so, a you guys all know what a, what a carriage is, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, he was fascinated by this car, and he started to run beside it. And as the car gained speed, so did Tony. He kept try trying to go faster and faster, trying to keep up with the car. And he wasn't going to give up. And as the wheels of the car rolled faster and faster, Tony's legs pounded the road, and his arms pumped back and forth, and he gasped, he gasped for air. And so uh, the people along the street, can you guys see the picture okay? I'm holding the mic now, so it's hard for me to do this. <laughs> um, so uh, the people along the street, they were watching Tony, and they were watching him race this horseless carriage, the car. And they shouted to each other, and they watched in amazement as the car soon just sped away. And Tony, he was a rascal at school, too. Um, it wasn't that he didn't like to learn. In fact, he was, he was smart. Um, he... He was quick in learning how to read, and he always solved math problems before anyone else in his class. It was just that he liked to have adventures, and it's hard to have an adventure inside of a classroom. He liked the outdoors, and often Tony would skip school. And one morning, his father, his papa, approached Tony, and he said, son, Today, I want you to go to school. Get a good start. Here is 10 cents for your recess. Be a good boy. Now, before you guys ask me, I have no idea why he needed 10 cents for recess, okay? For food? I, but it says for recess, so I don't know what that's about. I don't know. Everyone asks me, and I never have an answer. Um, so he thought, how? possibly skip school when Papa had been so kind to me. And so he thought, okay, today I am going to go to school. I am not going to skip school. I am going to actually go to school today. And what do you think he did? <laughs> you think he skipped school? Well, he had only walked one block when he saw his friend Giovanni. And it had been a while since Tony had seen Giovanni. And he said, he said, Giovanni, where have you been? I haven't seen you for days. 
And Giovanni, he said, oh, I've been out on my father's fishing boat, and he wants me to go again, but I don't really want to go. And so Tony, he had an idea. <laughs> I see some of you guys shaking your heads. He had an idea, and he said, let's hike over to the other side of the mountain just to see what it's like over there. I have always wondered. So they skipped school. And uh, Giovanni, he, he grinned. He said, let's go. And the boys turned off the path that led to school. And Tony, he pulled 10 cents out from his pockets. And he turned to Giovanni. He said, how much do you have? And Giovanni, he said, I don't have any money. Because they were going to need to have money to get supplies for their little adventure that they were going to go on. And so Tony, he said, well, we're going to need more money than this. And he starts thinking, he's like, mm, you know, I have a cousin who's a professor, and he has some goldfish. We can take the goldfish and sell them, and then we can get money that way. And so off they headed to the professor's house, and they caught a bunch of fish, but they could only sell half of the fish, and so they still didn't have enough money to buy everything they were going to need. And so Tony, he pocketed the money, and then they went back to the barracks, and they hid in a broom closet. And they waited until the night, and then they left the closet, and they went into their neighbor's houses, into their kitchens, and took a bunch of food and candles, and things they were going to need for their trip. And then they slept back into the broom closet. And uh, where am I at now? So the boys, they emerged from their hiding place with the early rays of sun. So they waited until the morning, and then they decided it was time to leave. They were going to go to the grocery store, and they were going to get everything else that they were going to need for this trip. And so they left. They started going to the store, and then suddenly a bunch of shouts came from behind them. And those shouts said, Tony, Tony, there he is. And then Tony, he started running as fast as he could. And that is where I'm going to leave you guys for today. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so you will have to come back next time to find out what happens with Tony and Giovanni. All right, thank you. In spite of the technical difficulties, I don't know if we'll have to record, re-record some of that or not, Rachel, when you're by yourself. But <laughs> All right, so what's going to happen to Tony? I have no idea. I've never heard that story before. But All right, but he was a rascal. You know any rascals? So, maybe Sunday night, uh, that took less than half an hour, so maybe Sunday night we'll let her do another one uh, as a part of our service. So, All right, well, uh, that's it for that. We do have a couple of guests with us tonight, and uh, they are the Heatons, all right? And they are missionaries trying to raise uh, money to go to, who remembers where? It was mentioned. What? UK, right, to the UK. And so I'm going to have uh, Brother Jonathan Heaton come, and he's going to just give us a little bit. Uh, we got time, 10, 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes. I'm <laughs> Always be ready, right? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Well, good evening. My wife and I are very thankful to be here with you. As Pastor said, my name is Jonathan. My wife, Gracie, she's sitting there in the back, and we are the Heatons, and we're raising support to go to the United Kingdom. And um, we've been on deputation now almost a year. We started last August, the middle of last August, and uh, we're sitting just over 50% um, support. And so we're thanking the Lord that just under a year we're halfway there. And uh, we're praying by the end of this year, maybe the beginning of next, that we will be at full support and on our way to the mission field. Uh, but maybe you have this question. Maybe you ask, why the U.K.? Why, why the U.K.? It, it's not a third world country. It's not somewhere out in uh, the bush in Africa. It's not somewhere in the rainforest. Why, why go to the UK? Uh, well, the UK at one point in time was really the center of 
the spiritual world. Uh, the, all the greatest missionaries at that time were sent out of the UK. Our English Bible that we have came from the UK. The first translations into English came from that part of Europe. And uh, they, they really, our spiritual forefathers came from the UK. But if you were to go to the UK today, you would find a very different place. You would find um, really three, four different countries that are post-Christian. And by that I mean at one point in time, uh, almost 80% of the population attended church regularly. That's, that's more than our country right now in the U.S. All over or just under 80% percent of the population. Today, if you were to go there, just under 5% of adults go to church at some point during the year, and even less than that, less than 2% of children attend church at some point in the year. So for my wife and I to sit in a service here and to see all the children and the teenagers and the older kids that are here and to hear you learning about God's Word, it's, it's a great encouragement to us because where we're going, most children have never even heard of God. My wife at one time was teaching in a children's Bible club, and uh, she was teaching there, and there were some other workers there, and one of the workers heard, or excuse me, said the name Jesus Christ, and uh, they were just talking as they were starting the Bible club, and they said the name Jesus Christ, and there was a couple uh, kids there that were there for the very first time, and uh, these kids, when the name Jesus Christ was mentioned, their eyes got real wide, their mouths dropped open, they gasped. Because the only time in their life that they had ever heard the words Jesus Christ was as a curse word. They had never heard that Jesus Christ was a real person, let alone that he was the Son of God, that he came to this earth and lived a sinless life and died on the cross and rose again to save us from our sins. They'd never heard any of this. And these are children. Not only that, but one of our missionary friends, I'll tell you about some of our friends that we're going to be working with in just a moment, but one of our friends, they were out knocking on doors just like we would do here in the States. They were inviting people to church, and uh, they were able to speak to an adult British person. And uh, this man that he was speaking to, he began to witness to, he began to read uh, passages of Scripture and tell him about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. And after he finished reading a certain passage, this man that he was talking to, he stopped one of my friends and he said, wait a minute, he said, that book you just read, he said, that sounds so nice. And then he asked this question. He said, did you write that? Now, this was an adult British person. He, he wasn't a child that had never been taught. It wasn't maybe an immigrant. There are lots of immigrants in the UK. But this was an adult male person. And this man asked the question, did you write that? He had never heard the word of God read before. Now, how many of you kids in here, could, if I asked you, you could tell me what this is? Yeah? What do you think? Guys, you guys, could you tell me what this is if I ask you? That's right. It's the Holy Bible. It's the Word of God. But there are two generations. That means you guys and your parents that have never heard the Word of God. That have never heard that Jesus Christ died on the cross to save them from their sins. There are two generations that know absolutely nothing about God. So yes, at one time the UK was a great spiritual and Christian nation, but today they're not at all. You know, the fastest growing religion in England and in the other countries, I will say this, the four countries, I keep saying the UK, it's England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Those are the four countries that make up the UK. And in the UK today, the fastest growing religion is Islam. There are Muslim people that come in. Um, my wife and I, when we show our video about our, our ministry, uh, there is a picture in there of 144,000 Muslim people that are kneeling for a national day of prayer. And it's not in the Middle East. It's right in the center of Birmingham, England, right in one of their, their second largest city there in England. And there's all of these immigrants that are coming in. And the fastest growing religion is Islam. But do you know what the largest religion is? Can anybody guess? Anybody? What's the largest religion in the UK? Anybody know? You won't get it. It's not really a religion. Atheism. Would you have thought, would you have said that? You should have raised your hand and said it. Atheism is the largest religion in the UK. They are considered a post-Christian nation. You ask, if you talk to most people on the street and you say, well, the Bible says that you need to repent of your sin and you need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. They would say, well, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. Well, the, the Bible says so. Well, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, the Bible says you're a sinner. Well, I don't believe I've ever done anything wrong. Well, God says, well, I don't believe in God. Well, then how do you talk to them? <laughs> and you have to go all the way back to the beginning and start teaching them from the, very, the most basic things that we think would be the simplest thing they've never heard in their life. 
Uh, but as dark as that sounds, the Lord is doing something so amazing. Uh, my wife and I, I will say this, we're graduates of Crown College of the Bible in Knoxville, Tennessee. And back in 2006, the president and founder of Crown College sent a team over to the UK because the Lord opened an opportunity. And what happened is that God gave us the opportunity for church buildings just like this one to be donated to us completely for free. And back in 2011, just a few years after they were there, they started the Crown Christian Heritage Trust. And this is a British-based charity, but what it does is it gives us the opportunity for buildings, for vans, for buses. One of the churches has a, you know, the big red double-decker buses in London? They have that as one of their Sunday school buses. It's amazing what God has done. But this charity was started so that these things could be donated to us. To date, we have had six church buildings given to us completely for free. We can just walk into these buildings, turn on the lights, and start working. And uh, the first five were all in England. The sixth one that was just given to us before COVID and everything happened was in Welshpool, Wales. So our first church in Wales. And God is just doing an amazing work. And uh, my wife and I, the Lord's given us three main burdens. The three burdens that the Lord's given us is to plant New Testament churches, just like when you see the Apostle Paul and all the apostles through the book of Acts go and plant these churches. The Lord's given us that desire, and he's providing for that because he's giving us these church buildings completely for free. But the Lord's also given us the desire to start evangelistic Sunday schools. And Sunday schools started in England. The, the greatest Sunday schools, what we now know as Sunday school, that concept of teaching children and bringing them in, it started in England. But today... If you were to go into 90% of churches in England today and ask them, what about, your, what about your Sunday school? Well, what about your children's work? I don't see any children. You know what the answer you would get nine times out of ten is this. They would say, well, the Sunday school is dead. The Sunday school is dead. Children have no desire to learn about God. Uh, parents have no desire to bring their children to church. The Sunday school is dead. Well, I can tell you God desires that children should come to him, and the Sunday school is not dead. And uh, we've been able to start, not just in those five or six churches, but in other areas around the UK, we're able to go in and start these Bible clubs and hold weekly Bible clubs and weekly Sunday schools for these children. And we have every summer, uh, the beginning of the summer, we hold what is called the Sunday School Day Parade. And we have all the Sunday schools that we know of, they all come to one church, and they all have a service together, and then they parade through the streets of Birmingham, England. We get the police to help us stop the traffic, and we parade right through the center of town to a park, and we have games and, and food and snacks, stuff like that. But at the last Sunday School Day parade, we had over 15 Sunday schools present, and we had over 400 children come to the Sunday School Day parade. So we praise the Lord, and even though people say, well, the Sunday school is dead, we can say, no, God is still working, and the Sunday school is not dead. But the last main point that my wife and I really desire, the ministry that God's given us, is to reach international people. You know, the, the, the Lord has not called my wife and I to the Middle East. He's not. He's leading us to the U.K. He's not called us into Asia or into some of these countries where Islam is uh, one of the largest religions or other religions like Buddhism or, or Sikhism or Hinduism, uh, um, religions like that. But the Lord has led us to the UK, and God has brought people from all over the world to the UK. If you were to go into Birmingham, England, this is my favorite thing to talk about because I love food. If you were to go to Birmingham, England, you would find what is called the Curry Triangle. Has anybody ever had curry? like Asian curry with rice and non bread. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. So in Birmingham, England, they have the curry triangle, and it's, from, it's curry from Pakistan, from India, and from Afghanistan. And they say in that part of England, you can get better curry from those countries than actually going to those countries. And the Lord has brought all these people, not just for food, but that they'll hear the gospel. And one great ministry that God has given us is reaching international people. Now let me ask you this. Really quick, I'll, I'll finish with this and I'll be done and turn it back over to Pastor. But how many of you think if you were to just walk up to a very devout Muslim man and invite him to church that he would come to church? You don't think so? What about a very devout Hindu man? Someone who, who truly believed in Hinduism and practiced uh, Hinduism every day? What about Sikhism or Buddhists? No, they, they, don't, they don't come to church. But you know what they will come to? We hold free English classes. 
We invite them to church. They still come into the church building, and one of the churches where I was able to work as a student while I was serving in the UK, it still says, Jesus Christ is Lord on the back wall. And they see all of it. They know we're Christians. We pray to open class. We pray to close class. But what happens is they come in, we take a grammar lesson, and we teach them how to speak English. Most of them move to the United Kingdom not knowing any words in English. And we teach them a grammar lesson, and then we teach them a reading lesson straight from God's Word. So we teach them how to speak English and read English straight from the Bible. Now think about this. Maybe you don't know a lot about Islam, but think about someone who has never heard that God has loved them. They've never heard that God is a God of love. All they know is that God, that their God is a God of wrath, is a God of anger, is a God of rules. They've never heard the verse that we could probably all quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, they've never heard that verse. They've never heard of a God of love. But then, as you read through God's word with them, and you teach them English, think about reading through the life of Joseph. And they don't understand some of these things that are happening, and you tell them how, yes, Joseph's brothers hated him, and they threw him in a pit and they were going to kill him and then they ended up selling him and then he was sold again and then he was lied about and then he was in prison then he was forgotten in prison and you tell them all these times that it seemed like the worst things happened to Joseph and yet God loved him and God was with him every step of the way and in the end God used him to save the known world and as you teach these people have never heard this before. It's almost like their eyes widen up and lighten up. It's almost like a light bulb comes on. They've never heard this before. But through these classes, we've seen Sikhs and Hindus and Buddhists and even Muslims come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And God is doing an amazing work. And just like you heard about the missionary story today or the beginning of it, I've heard some of that missionary story, so you're, you're uh, in for a real treat with that. But just like you heard that, I want to tell you really quickly about a missionary. This missionary, his name was William Carey. Has anybody heard about William Carey? Have you heard the name? Well, he is known as the father of modern missions. That means he was the first missionary to really go out and really get excited about leaving America and going overseas. He actually went to India. And at that time, India was known as the white man's grave. And William Carey, he said this when he was being sent out to those pastors who were sending him. He said, I feel as though I'm on the end of a rope. And I feel as though I'm being lowered down into a deep, dark pit. He said, and I don't know if I'll make it. And then he said this. He said, but if you'll hold the ropes in prayer, I know my God will see me through. You know, the, the, the Bible teaches us in different passages that God hears and answers prayer. One man said that prayer moves the arm of God. And my wife and I, we don't know you very well. We've only just dropped in. Uh, we grew up, or I grew up just a little ways from here in Ligonier, and I don't know really any of you that much. But I know one thing. When I came in here, I knew that I was still with family. I knew that I was with brothers and sisters in Christ. And our greatest desire, and what we would ask of you, is that you would just pray for us. You know, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could ask or think. We have our plans, and we have the desires that God has given us to do, but we know that God is able to do so much more. We just ask that you'd pray for us. But, Pastor, thank you so much for letting me share our burden. And uh, if you have any other questions, we definitely can answer those. But I don't want to take any more time. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Did you enjoy that? We need to go for some of those meals <laughs> over there. So, all right. Well, thank you. Let's, we will pray for, uh, for the Heatons, for Jonathan and Gracie as they continue on the deputation road and I imagine these last few months have been a little bit of a stretching maybe <laughs> plans don't always go as we would like as, as you know but I uh, just pray God will continue to move in hearts of, of people and get them where God has called them all right all right as far as we won't have our traditional prayer time necessarily but we'll, we'll take some updates and we will close in prayer at least and then close we'll close